Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, I am going to show you how to construct a regression neural network in Keras. A regression neural network is a neural network that is capable of predicting numbers, as opposed to classes or non-numeric values in the case of a classification neural network that we just saw. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. So if you're dealing with regression, we're going to take a look at that sample data set that we've used a number of times that predicts individual people, which product they're going to buy. In this case, though, we want to make it a regression problem. So what we're going to do is try to predict their age based on what product they bought and the other aspects about them. So we, this code is very similar to the, the feature engineering that we've done before. We're filling in missing values. We're standardizing various ranges, disease scores to make it more predictive for a neural network. But Y is coming from age. We're also going to split into a training and test data set. Next, we're going to build and train the neural network. Again, pay attention to how we are setting up the loss. This is regression, so out one output neuron. Mean square error is our loss function. We run it. It trains us really pretty good. The validation loss quickly falls off, and we're left with a pretty good result. We're going to calculate the mean square error. The mean square error is essentially the difference between every expected val predicted value and every expected value squared and summed. So if we look at the mean square error of this, it's 0 0.45. The problem with the mean squared error is that the units, it's, it's a lot like variance in statistics, the units are not meaningful. The only thing I can really say about a mean square error is lower is better. If you take the square root of it, it becomes the root mean square, RMSE, which you've probably heard of before. It's, it's a common error metric, RMSE. We take the square root of the whole thing, and now the units are in the same as the, the data. So we can see it's 0 0.67. So we're about a year, a little bit less than a year off when we try to calculate how how close we are to the to the actual values for age that we're that we're predicting a visualization that is very useful for rmsc is something called a lift chart so the way that i generate a lift chart there's very different ways there's a couple of different ways floating about i definitely did not invent this but this is this is the most common way that i've done this so we're going to sort the data by the expected output these are your y values, so the actual ages, so the data will be in, in that order. So this will be monotonically increasing. The line will go up, 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 but not ever back down as the, as the ages are sorted that way. And then for every x, for every output value along the, along the x, we are going to essentially plot where the actual predicted value was. So these two lines, if it's perfect, will overlap exactly, but you'll, you'll see some of the noise there. The x-axis is just 0 to 100% of the data set, and the y-axis is ranged according to the values predicted, so 0 to the age. Now to read this chart, the expected and predicted line should be close. Notice where one is above or below the other. Because maybe for higher ages you're less accurate, and for lower ages you're, you're better. The below chart is generally ac more accurate on lower ages, but we'll, we'll see. That's not always the case. It depends on how, uh, the, how the training actually went from the random values. Here, this is actually a really, really good one. We've got some outliers on higher ages up there, but in general, that's why I say that it is typically more accurate on, on the lower the lower ages. So this shows you it's it's somewhat noisy as it's going through the uh, the expected values. You can barely see the expected because the predicted line is is right on top of them. So this is this is actually quite good. 
And the numbers on the val the bottom, 0 to 500, there's 500 elements in our test set. So that's where that is coming from. Thank you for watching this video. In the next part, we're going to look inside of the backpropagation algorithms and see how they work. This content changes often, so subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on this course and other topics in artificial intelligence.